خير لا 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 فيش اي مشكله خالص فيش اي مشكله حبيبي انا اقدم حضرتك احنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انا طبعا يسعدنا ويشرفنا ان يكون معانا يعني اخ فاضل وزميل عزيز دكتور كريم محمود دكتور كريم من الطيور المصريه المهاجره دكتور كريم بيعمل في ولايه جورجيا في يو اس اي وشرف لنا ان انت حضرتك تكون معانا يا دكتور كريم ده شرف ليا بجد وربنا يبارك لك الله يخليك يا فندم شاكرين وفرصه ان احنا يعني نتعرف من حضرتك ونستزيد من علمك يا دكتور كريم كل الجهود اللي انت بتعملها دي اكيد حضرتك في تعليم الدكاتره ربنا يكرمك يا حبيبي دكتور كريم ويل سبيك اباوت اكيل ستانتون انشرس ونامل ان دكتور كريم يكون معانا مرات ومرات دكتور كريم من الامنت سيرجنس في الفود اند انكل ان شاء الله المره الجايه يعني وانس تايم نيكست تايم تكون على ال ال كنت حضرتك عايز تتكلم على اي ثينك الارثروبلاستي اوف ذا انكل وي كان توك اباوت انكل ارثروبلاستي اوكي ليتس دو ات ان شاء الله النيكست تايم ان شاء الله اتفضل يا فندم فرصه سعيده يا فندم اتفضل يا فندم السلام عليكم انا دكتور السلام عليكم النهارده ان شاء الله هنتكلم عن اكيل ستاند اند رابتشر امم اكيل ستاند اند زي ما احنا عارفين كلنا ان فيري ديبيتبل كونتروفيرشال المانجمنت بتاعته a lot of debates على المانجمنت نون اوبريتيف اوبريتيف كل الكلام ده هنحاول نخليه as much easy as possible as much updated as possible uh, um, um, introduction just short introduction we know that the acute Achilles tendon rupture is one of the most common sports injuries affecting 18 out of uh, 100 population uh, operative repair started to evolve in the mid 90s and it continues to grow up Uh, just a um, uh, short um, um, uh, brief uh, of uh, applied anatomy. Uh, again, the Achilles tendon is the largest tendon in the body, uh, made of the soleus and the gastrocnemius muscle, uh, originates uh, in the mid calf and then insert into the uh, uh, posterior aspect of the calcaneus. Uh, it sees at least uh, 10 times the body weights. Uh, so it's a very strong uh, tendon and it's very important tendon, the primary plantar flexion of the ankle. Again, uh, usually the ruptures uh, can happen in many, many places, whether it's uh, mid-substance, which is the most common one, it can happen in the distal Achilles tendon uh, insertion, or it can happen uh, approximal toward the gastrocnemius muscle. But usually the rupture happen in, in the four to six centimeters above the calcaneal insertion, which we call it like the watershed area or the hypovascular area. Uh, it's very important uh, to understand what is the blood supply of the Achilles tendon. The blood supply comes from the posterior tibial artery, and then it branches over the uh, paratenin uh, and make a plexus and this supply the, this uh, middle bars specifically the usually the upper third is supplied by the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle bellies and the lower the lower third is supplied by the uh, uh, calcaneal periosteal plexus that's why uh, the applied anatomy part of this always uh, uh, take care of the paratenin when you repair it because you, the blood supply comes from this area Risk factors usually happen in active individual. Usually uh, it's an obese person um, um, uh, with BMI more than 25. Sometimes if you dig in the history, you'll find that he's taking uh, oral quinolones. Sometimes you'll find that he's already on a steroid. And a lot of time you'll find uh, someone tried to inject uh, the Achilles tendon like with the cortisone. And usually three, four weeks later, you'll find a rupture happen. That's why never ever inject a cortisone in uh, around the Achilles tendon in insertion or non-insertion Achilles tendon. Mechanism of injury, normally it's happening uh, eccentric loading, sudden dorsiflexion of the ankle, or a direct blow or uh, laceration to the, uh, to the Achilles tendon in case of its open Achilles tendon injury. Usually the presentation, usually the patient will tell you that uh, I had uh, um, 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 someone stuck me in the back of the Achilles tendon. I felt like a, a sharp snapping pain with inability to walk or run. Usually in chronic Achilles tendon, the patient will come to you, tell you that there is no pain, but I have weakness from push off. Physical exam quickly, the most important part of the physical exam. So Achilles tendon rupture is a clinical uh, um, uh, diagnosis most of the time. Uh, you can diagnose it with a valuable defect or visible defect in the Achilles tendon. Um, and you do the Thompson test, which is the most important and most sensitive test. Uh, you ask the patient to lie prone and then hang the feet over the uh, edge of the table. Calf, calf squeeze. If it's plantar flex, it's intact. If it didn't, then it's uh, Achilles tendon rupture. Sensitivity is very high for this test, reaching up to 97% of time. Um, other tests, which is sometimes asked in board, uh, metal tests, which is basically the resting 
uh, plantar flexion uh, of the ankle. Uh, usually ask the patient to uh, uh, bend the knee, again, lie prone and bend the knees, and then you try to uh, squeeze the ankle, and then you'll find that the Achilles tendon or the ankle falling in dorsiflexion in neutral position, and you compare it to the other side. Sensitivity for all this uh, test collectively, usually between 73 to 96%. Uh, still, being that said, there is misdiagnosis of Achilles tendon rupture in best centers up to 10 to 15% of time. Uh, always get an x-ray. The x-ray will be giving uh, an idea about the, if there is any avulsion injuries to the Achilles tendon at the insertion. Um, sometimes also it will show the Kegger triad, which is basically, you can see it in, in this video, in this uh, uh, picture, you will see that the Kegger triad is this tri uh, triangle which is uh, between the anterior surface of the Achilles tendon and the posterior surface of the tibia. Uh, once the Achilles tendon rupture, usually hematoma form here, and then you will not find this Kieger triad as uh, evident as possible like before. Um, always get an x-ray. I recommend always get an x-ray for Achilles tendon rupture, even if it was the, uh, the most simple one. Sometimes you have to do an ultrasound to rule out if it's posture or versus, uh, versus a complete tear. Um, again, ultrasound is inexpensive, but it's operator dependent, and, and not everyone can, uh, can give you uh, a good view of the Achilles tendon. MRI is not needed for most of the time, except if you are treating a chronic tear, or you are treating a failed repair, or uh, you are treating like a proximal lesion, or uh, like the, the unequivocal uh, clinical finding on the exam. Generally speaking, we classify Achilles tendon ruptures into open and closed. The open one, which is uh, straightforward, you have to take him to the OR as soon as possible. You have to wash it out and you have to repair it. Uh, the one we are concentrating uh, today is the closed one. Whether it's acute or chronic, usually it depends on the time. Usually the acute is um, uh, something within four weeks. Uh, chronic, uh, uh, acute, uh, chronic ankle, uh, sorry, chronic Achilles tendon rupture usually uh, happen within four to six weeks uh, of the injury. You call it chronic. The management goal for any Achilles tendon rupture is two things. The first one is restore the musculotendinous length, strength, and tension, which is all linked together. And um, the most important is avoid any ankle stiffness. Starting with the management, again, the, the, the topic is very controversial. Uh, some areas of the world, you will find that every Achilles tendon rupture is being treated with uh, um, non-operative management. Uh, other parts here, like in the US, you will treat more uh, operative. Um, again, we have to understand what exactly the conservative management is. So historically, we used to put them like, uh, in uh, immobilization in a cast, in a plantar flexion cast for six to eight weeks. And uh, this is the old way of doing it. Uh, this way of doing the conservative treatment resulted in high uh, re-rupture rates. That's why we ask this in the boards a lot of the time. So that uh, for the um, non-surgical management, with this technique, usually you end up in re-rupture rates of almost 13% if you compare it to just 3.5% with the uh, surgical treatment. Um, with the more understanding of how the Achilles tendon heals, and um, we started to go into the uh, functional rehab protocol. So functional rehab protocol, which is the new uh, way of treating uh, Achilles tendon rupture, basically it's an early control motion for protected weight bearing or a combination of both. We'll go through this uh, uh, slowly. Uh, so the functional rehab pr protocol, you just you immobilize for two weeks. After that, you transition to a cam boot and you start to do uh, uh, with, the, with the heel lifts and you start to do gentle stretching exercises and resistance exercises as the, the, it progress over time. Uh, and again, there is a debate whether you allow weight bearing or non weight bearing in the cam boot. We will go through this also. So, um, a lot of tons of research which talked about uh, the importance of weight bearing and how the tendons healed. And we know now that weight bearing allow and promotes tendon healing in general. That's why the idea that let's go and, and do the functional rehab protocol and allow um, and weight bearing uh, early uh, to allow the, heat, the uh, tendon healing. Uh, this is uh, with an important blinded uh, um, RCT, which showed there is no difference in the heel rise or uh, re-rupture rates at one year if you did a functional rehab protocol uh, with and without non-weight bearing. What we learned from this, we learned that weight bearing was not associated with re-rupture rates and it's safe. 
But keeping saying that, you have to choose your patient. You have to be uh, choose the patient who comply with this activity restriction of the functional rehab protocol. Um, um, I think the most updated research now um, and the literature is the only difference between a functional rehab versus surgical management is the time to return to uh, work or the, to play and the plantar flexion strength. In my opinion, it's only about the plantar flexion strength. No matter what, I think you will have less plantar flexion strength with the best functional rehab protocol you do. Um, some patients are not um, uh, concerned a lot about losing the strength, but it's a big thing for uh, athletes or recreational athletes. Um, so uh, more recent trend RCTs showed that there is no difference in the re-rupture rates between uh, functional rehab protocol and the surgical repair. This is uh, the protocol we usually use, which is the functional rehab protocol. Usually, simply, you, you just started with a two weeks of non-weight bearing inside a cast. After that, you put the patient for uh, two to four weeks uh, with a heel lift. Uh, in a cam boot, you start doing some uh, protected weight bearing or you don't do weight bearing the, uh, according to how the patients uh, comply with the activities. And after that, at uh, four to six weeks, you uh, allow more weight bearing as tolerated uh, with continuing the same exercise, which is just passive exercising uh, toward neutral, nothing past dorsiflexion. And uh, six weeks to eight weeks, you start to remove the um, heel left and you start weight bearing completely in the uh, boots and you start doing resistance exercises. At eight weeks, you wean out completely from the um, uh, boots and you start going into uh, 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 more progression of range of motion and strengthening exercises. Uh, when it's doing the functional rehab protocol, you have to also always tell the patient that he always wear the boot while sleeping. And there is no uh, removing of the boots while he's bathing or taking dressing or whatever he's doing. It's important that to keep the boots uh, all the time uh, there. Um, so um, to summarize what we said, uh, non-surgical treatment of Achilles tendon rupture is not a synonymous for non-treatment. Actually, the functional rehab protocol should be administering and supervised closely. It's more difficult to treat uh, uh, Achilles tendon rupture non-operatively than operatively. Because again, uh, patient has to be um, uh, taking very uh, great cautious regarding um, um, uh, motion. Any dorsiflexion beyond uh, neutral can end in re-rupture again. Uh, the clinician has uh, to ensure that the patient understand that the healing is done if the tendon is vulnerable and he has to take care to avoid sudden loading of the Achilles tendon. Uh, usually the uh, return to sports <clears throat> to low impact activities, usually around six months, uh, going to high level activities like playing soccer or American football or rug rugby, usually it's around nine months. So this is, um, in general, I think that non-operative treatment yields a very good result if it's treated in the functional rehab protocol, whether you allow the patient to do uh, weight bearing or not. Uh, this is, you can uh, make it uh, fashionate to, uh, to each patient, but it's important not to put the patient like the old technique in plantar flexion cast for six to eight weeks. Usually you will end up with ankle stiffness and you will end up with more re-rupture rates. Um, moving forward for the surgical management, if you choose to do it, um, then we have two ways of treating the, the Achilles tendon rupture. You have the open and the minimal invasive or the uh, parse repair. Again, the open surgical repair improve the, func the functional outcomes, improve the re-rupture rate than the non-operative. But again, there is a lot of wound complication and infection and skin necrosis with any open Achilles tendon repair. Um, uh, usually the surgical management of any Achilles tendon historically done through a midline posterior approach while the patient are in prone. Uh, nowadays, we, after we did started doing the vascular mapping and everything, we understand that most of the blood supply is in the axis between the medial malleolus and the medial border of the Achilles tendon. So you have to do uh, uh, the, your incision over the medial border of the Achilles tendon, not in the midline. You can see this is in the uh, straight line here. Uh, this is the regular uh, midline approach versus the dotted line, which is the, um, uh, where they more vascularity, you can see it in the, uh, uh, in the medial approach. So uh, suturing techniques, a lot of suture techniques, everyone is using the one he, uh, he was trained for, Kessler, Bunnell, 
uh, Krakow. Usually Krakow, it, most of the people use it, but it has tendency to, to do a gap formation. Um, this is a symbol, um, a drawing for the, uh, how we do Krakow, uh, Chrysler and Bunnell. Um, what we know from the tendon healing that the actual strength of the repair is not um, relied on the technique you're using. The most important thing is how many sutures uh, cross the repair sites. Uh, usually I repair with a newer material like epibond or fiber wire from Arthrex, which show in, uh, uh, biomechanically to have a greater tensile strength. Usually if you're going to do this open, you have to run the circumferential epitendinous sutures. It allow in, uh, less gap formation and it improves the strength by 20%. So um, always prepared when you do an open repair that you find that you don't have enough tissues for repair because sometimes um, um, it's, it's already uh, very bad tissues after you repair it and you will find that the tendon is not that good. So always try to do this trick, which is opening the um, uh, posterior compartment fascia to expose the uh, muscle belly of the FHL. This usually uh, results in increasing of the healing and bring more blood supply toward the Achilles tendon uh, <clears throat> a watershed area. So it increased the healing of the Achilles tendon. Uh, minimal invasive techniques, uh, which uh, uh, started around 80s in Europe and um, started to um, improve over time until it reached to the current uh, um, um, technique, which is usually done by a, an Arthrex uh, port system. I don't know if it's here, it's, it's there in uh, Egypt or not, but I, I think a lot of people use it everywhere nowadays. Uh, you just make a small incision uh, over the like a longitudinal incision here, like a one centimeter or 1.5 centimeters. And then you pass the jig for the Achilles tendon. And then you start passing the sutures and you do the same on the other side and you start to repair it. Um, uh, it improved the outcome um, a lot in comparison to the open repair. I personally did uh, uh, the latest um, um, RCT, um, systematic review and meta-analysis meta of RCTs between uh, Emery and um, uh, Prof. Mark Meyerson and also Aspitar in Qatar. Uh, and we looked in um, um, all level one evidence comparing open to minimal invasive repair. Uh, we included only RCTs so to, good, to have level one evidence. Um, we, um, the primary outcome for our studies was um, pleural nerve injuries, skin complications, infections, re-rupture rates, and uh, out functional outcome scores, and anchor range of motion. Uh, 10 RCTs was uh, identified, um, almost similar for the open versus the minimal invasive with a uh, total number of patients uh, 500 uh, plus. The mean re-rupture rates of um, um, the open technique usually range between zero to 6.8 with the mean 2.5 versus 1.5 for the uh, parse repair, which showed that the parse repair has a better uh, um, um, re-rupture rate. It's not uh, significant statistically, but I think it's clinically significant, which is, makes sense because you are passing more suture uh, through the repair. That's why you have a, re a lower re-rupture rate. Uh, the most um, 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 question or uh, debate behind the parse repair is uh, the sural nerve injury. So definitely there is no cases of sural nerve injuries with the open repair, but always you get uh, sural nerve neuritis at least uh, around 3.4 in the minimal invasive techniques, which reaches uh, statistical significance. So in my hands, most of the time, the sura nerve neuritis is something transient, and uh, usually it resolves within six to a year, six months to uh, one year, uh, but still it's something you have to warn your patient about. It. Um, functional outcome was the same between the open and the um, uh, porous repair. Uh, infection, which is very important, Again, um, the open techniques in um, infection rates in the mean is 6%. So 6% uh, of time you, you do an open Achilles tendon, you will get a superficial infection, which is a quite high number, reaching up to 18%. Uh, minimal invasive is much, much better. It's, it's sometimes it's dropping to 0%, and it, the, mini, the, the average of it is 0.4. So the superficial infection is much, much lower. Operative time is much less with the MIS technique. So you are saving more time in the OR. There was no difference in the skin necrosis or the adhesion rates or the keloid score. 
um, usually the time to return is around, um, rate of return is more in the uh, parse reaper because it's around 82% versus 75% in the um, open Achilles tendon reaper. Usually the time time to return it to the sport is around uh, 160 or 180 days in the uh, parse reaper. It's almost, almost similar, no big difference. So uh, what we learned from this one that I think in, if you have the technique and uh, um, the parse reap system you have, I think it's better to use the parse repair, the minimal invasive uh, Achilles tendon over the open Achilles tendon and always be ready that you convert the minimal invasive if you need to an open repair. So you have to be trained first on the how to do the open repair. And then uh, if you, um, you want to upgrade, you can go for the uh, minimal invasive. Another um, um, difficult topic, which is uh, distal Achilles tendon avulsion. It's a very challenging um, uh, and always it's not an easy one to repair. Uh, it's not uh, like the mid substance where you heal the end to end. Usually you don't have this luxury here and usually you end up uh, uh, treating um, uh, tendon to bone. Usually tendon to bone take more time to heal and more uh, less favorable outcome. Uh, always be uh, ready with distal Achilles tendon avulsion that you will um, um, face a bigger situation than you think. So like here, it looks sim it looks very um, uh, easy one. This is just a, a distal Achilles avulsion, MRI is done, which I will always recommend in a distal Achilles avulsion because usually the reason for that is a degenerative coming from the insertion of Achilles tendinopathy. When you open these, you'll be facing that a situation where um, either the Achilles tendon is in bad condition, you start to, de to debris this tendon and you ended up with a gap, you ended up with a hugland. And um, so a simple Achilles tendon with a distal Achilles avulsion can turn into a monster. And again, um, you treat those with um, um, taking the hugland out. After that, you have to um, sometimes to, to do a VY advancement, which we'll show it later on. And can you have to do an, um, an FHL transfer? So um, usually you repair this to the uh, calcaneus back again with either anchors or bitonidesis screws, whatever you prefer. But again, those are a little bit more difficult to treat. And sometimes it it's not, doesn't stop at the level of um, uh, just a repair. Chronic Achilles tendon rupture. We know that it's uh, once the Achilles tendon rupture passed four to six weeks, we call it um, uh, chronic Achilles tendon rupture, different uh, classification. It's all about how much gap you have after you debride the tendon. So Myerson, when he uh, first described it, he said that gaps less than two centimeters after you debride both ends of the tendon, you can treat it with direct repair, like usual. Um, after that, gap of two to five, usually he treated with um, um, a VY advancement. Uh, sometimes he do uh, an augmentation with tendon transfer. A gap of more than five centimeters usually is primarily treated with, uh, again, tendon transfer, whether it's um, um, autograft or you can have to do a, an allograft or combination of a VY lengthening if you need it. This is uh, how you do a VY lengthening. Always be prepared when, when you go for a chronic Achilles tendon to do the VY. Usually you go up to the level of the uh, gastrocnemius upon urosis. You can do this, whether you do it a, a single incision or you can do a, a double incision and pass it uh, down. Um, and then once you do this, you will end up, you will get late length and you convert the V to the Y and then you repair it with uh, vitral O sutures and then reattach the tendon to cross the gap back again. Um, again, this is a mid-substance uh, chronic Achilles tendon rupture. Again, the same, you open over the, um, you see the difference between the resting um, ankle uh, uh, position. Again, you open post-remedial, you will find the, the tendon, you debride it, and then you do your repair. In this case, it was less than two centimeters, so it ended up with just a direct repair. Um, um, I was trained when I was working in Emory, so I trained with Dr. Uh, Samah Labib and he uh, modified the Krakow. He do what he called it as a gift box techniques. It's a very smart idea to do. So you do the Krakow like usual. And after that, you, uh, uh, you get the two sutures in the gap. And then you took like a, a Keith needle and pass it 
above the tendon, above the um, uh, Achilles tendon um, suture. And then when you tie it, you will tie it above the gap. So it really ends and approximate the, with the, the, the wounds really better. Uh, he called it like a, a gift box technique because he crisscrossed cross it, but it's a very smart idea to do. And it's, it's um, actually we did uh, biomechanical testing on that and uh, we find that it's more, uh, um, um, have more than side strengths to do. Again, um, this is how we do the gift box, post-remedial incision, um, deplete the tendon, you, you, you do the crack out, you get the two ends and you pass it prox uh, above the um, um, sutures and then you repair it. And this is the failure at, at strength. Um, always be prepared with chronic Achilles tendon, you will do an FHL transfer. So FHL transfer, again, was um, uh, first described by Dr. Wabner. Uh, I was, had the pleasure to train with Wabner when, um, when I was in a fellow in the University of Pennsylvania. So the way Dr. Wabner do it is uh, do it a uh, double incision, one at the midfoot to get the FHL and one, the regular one for the Achilles tendon. Um, with doing it this techniques, you get a huge amount of the lens, but you add the morbidity of two incisions. Um, again, um, we know that the muscle is synergistic, very strong repair of all the available repair. Some, some people do the peroneus previs or peroneus longus, but this is very uh, strong uh, uh, transfer. And also the FHL, FHL muscle, we know it that the muscle and the tendon undergo a hypertrophy and uh, it, it, it become more stronger than um, uh, it looks when you transfer it. The way I'm doing my FHL transfer, usually it's through the incision. You just um, open the posterior compartment and then you find the FHL muscle, track it as much as distal as you can. You'll find the tendon and then cut it at the um, uh, uh, tunnel in the talus. Um, uh, and then you uh, ta um, tackle it down to the calcaneus, uh, just anterior to the, uh, and medial to the Achilles tendon uh, with a pyotomidesis screws. This is how Wagner do it. Um, so this is a, his incision for the midfoot here, and then he got it here, and then he got the tendon back again from the uh, Achilles tendon wound, and then he, he weaved it through the Achilles tendon. You have a big length, so you can actually uh, fill any gap you want, even more than five centimeters with uh, the technique from Dr. Wapner. Again, it's, it, you don't need it all the time, but uh, it's a little bit more difficult to do, more morbidity, but if you need to do, just go for it. Uh, we know that um, if the gap is more than five to six centimeters, then I think at this point, uh, you have to do an, an, an allograft. Um, you can use a fresh frozen Achilles tendon allograft. Uh, you will not find a lot of things um, to support this in the literature, but we know that uh, if the tendon is uh, the gap in the mid substance, then um, you, you don't need to use the calcaneal block. You just put the um, graft and span this gap. Uh, if this is uh, an insertion of chronic Achilles tendon rupture with a big gap, then you have to do the calcaneal block and you fix it with a screw. Always, whenever you do those, you have to, uh, because it's a dead tendon, you have to transfer the FHL to bring more blood supply uh, from the muscle valve. So in summary, uh, um, for if you choose to go for conservative treatment, it's fine, but you have to use the functional rehab protocol uh, and this should be um, uh, followed closely. Uh, this is indicated in all patients with uh, comorbidities, less active patients. It's fine to use it for them, but again, functional rehab protocol. Uh, surgical repair is indicated in most of the high level or recreational athletes, distal avulsion, chronic Achilles tendon repair. Uh, minim minimal invasive or the parse is my first choice if available. Always be repaired with FHL transfer if needed. Distal avulsion is a challenging and it's not an easy one. You have to be very prepared for it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Karim, for this very interesting presentation. Uh, Dr. Karim, we have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's post-operative rehabilitation protocol after repair? So again, you, you do the same like functional rehab. Don't trust the patient. My, my protocol is two to three weeks in a, uh, in a plantar flexion cast and a splint. After that, you put him in a boot with two lifts. 
Um, again, I fashion it whether I will put him some protected weight bearing or not. If the patient is, you can trust him and you can depend on him, then you can go with uh, some weight bearing, uh, like to touch. If not, then you uh, uh, six weeks of non weight bearing in the splint first, and after that, the boot. And after that, at six weeks mark, you start uh, doing the weight bearing with the heel lifts, and you start taking one lift each week until you are flat. After that, take the boot and you start doing the physical therapy. Thank you, Dr. Karim. Uh, uh, one of our dear attendees is asking about the sources of studying foot and ankle. Do you prefer any special source for studying foot and ankle? I say again, I'm sorry. Uh, studying foot and ankle, yeah. the source source of, of uh, studying foot and ankle. I mean, the, 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 most, um, the most common one is a man's, a Roger Mann book. Um, usually it's the, the first one to start with with any foot and ankle surgeon. Um, um, this is coming from Roger Mann, the one who started the whole revolution in the foot and ankle uh, in the uh, 80s. And I think it's usually, it's a very good book. Again, you will not find a book which is a test book and everything, but usually you start with Roger Mann first and start uh, improve yourself from, with reading um, uh, articles. Yeah, another question, Dr. Karim, when uh, you use the VY lengthening? Any time, so usually the, uh, the problem some people have is um, when they repair the, after they deprete, they find that the Achilles tendon is a little bit short. And yes, you have to repair it in 20 degrees of plantar flexion, but not more than that, because you will end up with uh, an equinus gait. So whenever yeah. intraoperatively, you find that you're not comfortable and you think that it's too much, because sometimes you will end up with an equinus gait. The patient will not uh, stretch all this. Usually, yes, he will stretch, but not beyond 20 degrees. So whenever you feel that, just be, don't be shy and go with a VY. It, it usually give you uh, up to five to six centimeters. Uh, if you don't know how to do the VY, you can just do a gastrocnemius recession sometimes, just do a, um, a strayer procedures. Um, again, it's, it's not that difficult. And um, it, makes, it makes you leave the OR more comfortable if you need to do it. Yeah. The last question, Dr. Karim, do you use the uh, Bosworth procedure for the chronic rupture? Uh, which one? The Bosworth. The Bosworth. I, I don't know. Wh which one is this one? I, I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know this. I usually uh, Dr. do... Dr. Brahim, uh, you are asking this question. Monk to add the Dr. Brahim, El El Hadretak Aizobazab. We use the aponeurosis. Uh, for the VY, you, you mean the uh, turn down flap, right? The gastrocnemial. I think so. Yes. I, I find it more difficult to do the turn down flap. I think the VY give you more. Um, uh, lens uh, and um, um, it's, mo it's more easy to do. You can do the VY in less than 10 minutes and we get very good tendon and you repair it. Um, so I usually use the uh, um, a VY. Some people use the, the gas definitely the, the turn down flap from the gastrocnemius, but I think it, uh, the VY is much easier in my hands. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Karim. Okay. ممكن معلش أنا استغل وجود حضرتك معنا دكتور كريم يعني you can tell our dear attendees about your experience in the states the way of making postgraduate studies in the states and making a job there obtaining a job there تمام أنا يعني أنا بدأت أنا دفعت 2008 خلصت الامتياز 2010 دخلت الجيش وبعد كده أم... سافرت على طول رحت قطر بدأت عملت الريزدنس بتاعتي في قطر في ويل كورنيل في قطر أم... خمس سنين وبعد كده تشيف ريزدنس هير فور اير وبعد كده في خلال الوقت ده كنت خلاص قررت اهم حاجه ان انت تكون مقرر انت عايز تعمل زي ما الدكتور محمد قال السب سبيشاليتي تريننج اتس فيري امبورتنت ناو ادايز هير مثلا في امريكا ما فيش تقريبا اقل من واحد او اثنين في الميه اللي بينتهوا من غير فيلوشيب You have to do a fellowship, whether it's a year, six months, three months, 
بس يو هاف تو دو يو هاف تو هاف ا سب سبيشاليتي بيكوز ذس اللي بتخليك اقوى وفي نفس الوقت حتى لو انت عندك في الدكتوراه او حاجه ان انت بتعمل الحالات فانت بتعرف تشتغلها جاست يو نيد ا سيرتيفيكت ات ذا اند اوف ذا داي تو بروف ان ذات يو ديد ا سب سبيشاليتي ترين انا جيت هنا امريكا بعد كده كنت عايز ابقى فوت ان انكل لازم تعمل طبعا المعادله Uh, في فيلوشيبس في امريكا uh, ما بتحتاجش المعادله uh, ساعات uh, غالبا بتبقى في الليم بلانتنج او بتبقى في الهاند uh, في كابل اوف فيلوشيب ما بتحتاجش معادله uh, بعد كده انا عملت الفوت ان انكل فيلوشيب في اول حاجه في يونيفرستي اوف بنسلفانيا مع كيث وابنر وبعد كده عملت بيدياتريك فيلوشيب في كامبل كلينك في ممفيس كنت بس ب... هي بيدياتريك بس انا كنت مهتم جدا بالبيدياتريك فوت ان انكل وال واللو لم ديفورميتيز آه بعد كده رحت امري لما رحت امري آه آه كنت بشتغل زي آه يعني فكره ان انت كانك اتندنج آه من هناك لقيت الفرص ان انت تيجي تقدر تشتغل انت مش عامل ريزيدنسي انت معكش الامريكان بورد بس آه ممكن بسبب ان انت عدت كذا فيلوشيب وعملت اكريديت تريننج تقدر تاخد الانستيتيوشنال لايسنس تاخد سوري اما انستيتيوشنال لايسنس او تاخد لايسنس في الولايه ذات نفسها. من هناك تقدر تشتغل. بعد كده ربنا كرمني ولقيت لقينا هنا الشغل اللي موجود في اجاستا. وبس بشتغل فوت ان انكل وبعمل بيدياتريك برضه لور لم ولم بلانتنج ساعات. البوست جراديويت تريننج في امريكا مفتوح في تخصصات معينه وسهل ان انت تعرف تاخده. بيدياتريكس uh, سهله السباين في بوزيشنز الانكولوجي موجود الهاند موجود الفوت ان انكل موجود اتس ا ليتل بيت مور ديفيكولت ان انت تاخد تروما او جوينتس uh, او سبورتس بس تقدر تاخدهم لما تبقى عملت فيلوشيب قبليها يعني مثلا ممكن تبقى انت مثلا عايز تروما uh, uh, مثلا uh, او جوينتس تقدر تعمل uh, مثلا تقدر تعمل بيدياتريك مثلا الاول بعد كده تقدر لما يكون عندك الكونكشن والسي في بتاعك على اكتر فتقدر تاخد الفيلوشيب اللي انت عايزها. الفيلوشيب هنا في امريكا الانكولوجي الناس اللي بتحب الجوينت ممكن تروح تاخد انكولوجي فيلوشيب وهي في الاخر بتبقى جوينت فيلوشيب. انت بالعكس انت بتعمل مور ادفانسد جوينت او ريكونستراكشن فدي برضه وان تريك سم بيبل دو بس اجين في معظم الاحوال انت محتاج يو اس ام ال اي بس في بعض البوزيشنز بتبقى مش محتاجه المعادله في بعض الفيلوشيب كمان في امريكا بيبقى ليها بعض الكونكشنز مع الاي او مثلا لو انت لو, لو انت مثلا في كونكشن في المكان اللي انت شغال فيه في الاي او بتلاقي ان في مثلا سباين فيلوشيب او تروما فيلوشيب فيري كونكتد تو ذا اي او ومن هناك تقدر تعملها واجين اهم حاجه ان البوست جراديو تريننج انا بشوف مثلا دكتور محمد دايما بيبقى انترستد في الادفرتايزنج للزملات لان هي فعلا دي الحقيقه ان اهم حاجه اللي بتعمل الدكتور العظم كويس هي الفيلوشيب مش الريزدنس الفيلوشيب هي اللي هتخليك مميز لان في كتير جنرال اللي هتخليك مميز عن اي حد تاني حتى لو ثلاث شهور بس وحتى لو ما مدتش ايدك حتى لو اوبزرفر شيب بس هتشوف تكنيكس وانت اصلا معظم الجراحين العظم في مصر شاطرين جدا وايديهم كويسه فهو مش محتاج قوي ان هو حد يديله نايف بايده ويشغله انت بس مجرد ان انت هتشوفها وتشوف هم بيتعاملوا ان هو الريت هنا بيبقى كتير قوي لان هنا عشان فكره ان انت كل واحد بيعمل الحاجه بتاعته بس فانت ريت غير طبيعي غير طبيعي في الـ في الـ في السب سبيشاليتي فانت كده كده هتتعلمها في اقل من شهرين في معظم الاحيان في ثلاث شهور آه مثلا في الاسبان بتحتاج وقت اكتر طبعا لان الاسبان اصعب بس في معظم الاحيان في الفوت ان انكل في الهاند في الجوينتس بتلقط الحاجات زيهم بالظبط في اقل من من شهرين ثلاثه فانت مش محتاج اكتر من كده ساعات كتير جدا في اخر الفيلوشيب ما بتبقاش عايز تشتغل بعد ست شهور ما فيش جديد بتقدم بتتعلمه ف بس اهم حاجه دايما نصيحتي لاي حد هو الفيلوشيب الفيلوشيب فيري امبورتنت 
وده اللي احنا اعتقد ان هو اللي بينقص بعض الـ 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 الناس في مصر هو فكره ان ان حد يقول لهم الفيروسيت دي موجوده فين ودي المواصفات ودي الريكوايرمنت بتاعتها روح اتصرف انا مفيش م... اه هقدر احط لك كونكشنز بس انت لازم تعمل شويه مجهود ان انت تفولفيل الريكوايرمنت بتاعتها آم... ومن ساعتها بس انت هتقدر ت... 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 وانس ان انت عرفت تتعمل ازاي خلاص هت يو دو ات يعني يس وتصديقا على كلام حضرتك يا دكتور كريم بيه آه الحمد لله ربنا سبحانه وتعالى يعني اكرمني ان احنا في المؤتمر الجاي بتاع الجمعيه ان شاء الله انا جايب تو بروبوزلز لاثنين فيلوشيبس واحده على هو واحده لونج بيريد فيلوشيب واحده شورت بيريد فيلوشيب الشولدر سيرجري فيلوشيب بعتها لي بروفيسور موريشيو رافائيلي وبروفيسور جوز كارلوس غارسيا من نايون انستيتيوت في البرازيل دي فور 3 مانثز ودي على الشولدر سيرجري وتبقى هتبقى كل ثلاث اشهر وان اوف ذا ايجيبشن فيلو هيروح البرازيل ان شاء الله يتدرب عليه اللونج تيرم فيلوشيب النهارده الحمد لله وانا جاي انا انا كان عندي محاضره في المنيا فوانا جاي لقيت البروفيسور سيب ستيرج من فريملي بارك هوستل في يو كي باعت لي الفول ديتيلز الحمد لله بتاع الفيلوشيب هي فور تو ييرز ال ال سبيسيفيكيشن الوحيد او الحاجه الوحيده اللي طالبينها ان هو يكون هي تبقى سبونسر انا جايبها وحديها هديه لجمعيه دراسه العظام المصريه هتبقى سبونسرد بيها الحاجه الوحيده اللي مطلوبه يا دكتور كريم ان هو يكون ريجسترد في الجي ام سي او آه واخد البلاب واعتقد ان في كتير من اولادنا وزمايلنا الشباب الصغير واخد البلاب وده سهل ان شاء الله بامر الله ان هو يحصل على الفيلوشيب ودي تو ييرز فيلوشيب بمرتب كامل ان شاء الله ان شاء الله هيتم الاعلان هنا في مؤتمر القادم بعد اسبوع باذن الله تعالى السؤال اللي اساله حضرتك يا دكتور كريم دو يو ريكومند فور اور اتنديز ذا ستيتس اور يوروب انا عشان رحت رحت قطر فكان معظم الاتندنج اللي عندي في يورو من, من يوروب طبعا او من كندا وبعد كده انا رحت من هناك رحت امريكا انا شايف ان ان التجربه بتتحكمش بالمين احسن لان هي كل واحده ليها مميزات وكل واحده ليها عيوب بس ان جنرال ان جنرال ميزه الميزه الوحيده في التعليم الطبي في امريكا هو ان هو في ستاندرد بمعنى ايه ستاندرد ان ده اللي مش موجود شويه في المانيا وفي انجلترا ان ممكن تلاقي مكان فظيع بس مكان تاني مش هي از نوت ميتنج ريكوايرمنت اللي المفروض تبقى موجوده هناك فبتلاقي ان هو مكان اسمه كويس جدا وممكن يكون من احسن الاماكن بس مش كل حاجه هنا في امريكا الوضع شويه عشان هو مور ستاندردايز فبتلاقي ان ان حتى اوحش فيلوشيب او اوحش ريزيدنسي هي ميتنج البيز لاين الريكوايرمنتس اللي لازم اي حد يعمله Yeah. امريكا فرص كتيره في تخصصات معينه الفوت اند انكل الهاند البيدياتر الانكولوجي البيدياتركس الحاجات دي سهل ان انت تعمل فيها فيلوشيب وممكن تلاقي بعديها وظيفه يعني احنا هنا احنا مش كتير طبعا المصريين اللي في نفس الكاتيجوري بتاعي بس احنا مثلا 20 او 25 واحد انا دايما بنقول لبعض ان هي ملاش علاقه خالص بانت شاطر او لا طبعا انت شاطر واجتهدت بس هي بيبقى نصيب في الاول والاخر اهم حاجه تبقى عارف ان انت ان مثلا انا عملتها او حد تاني عملها ان هي انت تقدر تعملها ان هي مفيش حد احسن من حد يعني انت في الاخر بتعرف الطريق ده او طريقتها هتتعمل ازاي وانت بتحاول تجتهد فيها يعني هي الموضوع كله كده I think ان في المجمل امريكا فيها فرص اكتر للتعليم الطبي من انجلترا انجلترا فيها فرص اكتر للشغل من يعني انت تشتغل از اتندنج او سينيور ريجسترار او 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 من امريكا الحصول على الشهادات من انجلترا اسهل سواء الاف ار سي اس او ان انت بعد كده تقعد تاخد ال السي سي تي بتاعتهم الموضوع اصعب بكتير في في امريكا وفي الاخر الاهم من ان انت تدور على الشغل فين النقطه الاهم اللي هو دكتور محمد بيتكلم فيها هي الفيلوشيب ما تبصش انت هتشتغل فين انت هتبص ان انا في المرحله دي انا لازم اعمل فيلوشيب ايا كان هي الفيلوشيب ايه وايا كان مدتها بس هي اهم حاجه 
تخلص الماجستير او الدكتوراه او الزماله او اي حاجه وحسب خبرتك تاخد الفيلوشيب على قد الوقت اللي انت تقدر تاخد في ناس لازم تاخد سنه وفي ناس هتقدر تاخدها في ثلاث شهور حسب تختلف من شخص لشخص دكتور كريم انا بشكر حضرتك شكر جزيل وانا سعدت واحنا كلنا سعدنا بوجود حضرتك معانا وبوجودنا مع حضرتك اي ويش يو اول ذا بيست ان شاء الله يعني ضروري ان احنا نشوف حضرتك تاني في انذر توك فيري سون ان شاء الله ان شاء الله جزاك الله كل خير جزانا وياكم يا فندم اند وي ويش يو اول ذا بيست ثانك يو سو ماتش ان شاء الله نشوف حضراتكم الجمعه الجايه الجمعه الجايه ان شاء الله في مفاجاه كبيره ان هو في تجمع لي كبير لاساتذه الديفورمتي من هال ومن ليفربول من انجلترا ومعاهم اساتذه فيزيوثيرابي للديفورمتي هيبقى في يعني كولكشن من الاميننت ستارز من انجلترا اباوت 5 اور 6 سبيكرز ان شاء الله هيبقى يوم قوي ويوم جميل وان شاء الله نشوف حضراتكم على خير شكرا جزيلا دكتور كريم بي ربنا يخليك بالتوفيق ان شاء الله يا فندم شكرا جزيلا يا فندم شوف حضرتك على خير يا دكتور كريم تصبحوا على خير يا فندم